you have a birthday or an anniversary, come on down. Hershey's, Reese's, we have Whoppers today, Skittles. Make you wish you had a birthday or an anniversary. <laughs> Just so that you know, I had to get permission from her parents. <laughs> <laughs>
churches, but if you ask, you shall receive. We just like this. Turn it off during the service. Yeah. Ted said you have to make sure to turn it off, though. He didn't, he didn't want you to interrupt me, though. Any other things? All right, Miss Connie's got a story this morning. So let's pray. Father, we just come before you, just asking you to be with us during this time of, of worship. Be with them. Be with this whole group. Touch us in such a, a unique way that, that we leave this place speaking of you and, and just, just willing to, to follow you as we leave, to speak of others or speak to others about you, to witness for you in everything we do with our family, with our work, with, with our neighbors. We also pray for our children as they come up to listen to your word that you touch them in, in such a, a simple, obvious way that they can know more about you and just leave this place just wanting to grow closer to you also. We pray in your name. Amen. 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 Children, you're welcome to come. Of the kingdom 
and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Jesus went teaching, proclaiming the good news. Now I want to read again. I'm still in the book of Matthew. I am in chapter 9, verse 35. Jesus went throughout all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. So Jesus, who lived a perfect life, who did wonderful, great miracles that no one else can do. He also spoke the good news. Now, do you think it's important for us? Or are we just supposed to be good people? What does the Bible say? What did Jesus do? He spoke the good news. He told people the good news. Now, I'm going to read to you again. This time I am in the book of Romans, chapter 10, and I'm going to start at verse 14. How then can they call on one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. What I'm trying to tell you is that everything, Jesus not only spoke, but he did. And I think if Jesus had to speak proclaiming the good news, being perfect and all the miracles he did, yes, we're supposed to live a good life. Yes, we're supposed to live to honor Jesus. And I hope we do. And I hope that does make a difference in, in other people. But what else are we supposed to do? We're supposed to proclaim. We're supposed to share the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what I wanted to share with you today. I brought something, but I've got to make sure I've got enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Just enough. Okay, so don't leave without your treat, okay? Um, and I had forgotten to ask somebody to pray for us. Uh, Mr. Goodson, since you did such a good job trying to get the children out of here, could I get you to pray for us? Sure. Yeah. Use words. Again, yeah, this time. <laughs> Father, we just pray for our children. We bring them to you, asking you to touch their lives, asking them to just know more about you and everything that they do. But we also ask for each of us, the people around them, their families, their friends, all of the people that touch these children, we pray for them. We pray for them that they know more about you, that they can be examples in each of these, child, each of these children's lives, just to, to see what it's like to be a son or a daughter of the king. We pray for them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, please rise to your feet. Oh, we have a... Can I have a question real quick of the parents as they're going out? Anybody have a peanut allergy? Evan. Kevin? Kevin? No. no. Oh, okay. okay. All right, please rise to your feet. We'll continue our praise and worship.
new signatures on everything like that. So I've asked some guys, Rich, you can get this. I've asked some guys to pass these around. If you are a, a, a member of New Life Fellowship and you join the church and you want to be a part of the New Life Fellowship, just take one of these. I need a signature from everybody that's, that we can. And you'll be able to read on there. That's the, uh, the uh, covenant that we signed together because we covenant to be what God wants us to be. In the church, we want to do that. So we're going to take care of the paperwork. Where's a good place to put them if people finish filling them out this morning? If you can finish filling them out this morning, just put them in the tithe box and we'll separate them out. That would be a great idea. The more we get in quicker, then the easier it'll be. So we really do appreciate that. Okay. And if you didn't get one, they'll be out there and they'll be available for the next couple of weeks. So we want to make sure we get it all done. And stay in compliance. Doesn't that sound fun? Now, the next thing I need to ask you a question. Have anybody here ever had something that was kind of real disconcerting in their life? Maybe a health issue, financial, anything like that. And all of a sudden, God seemed to kind of take care of it. Mm. Well, when He does, that's part of your testimony. So this morning, we're going to hear a testimony from Joan. And, uh, well, just come on up here and... She has something she wants to share with everybody. Wayne, can we have a pulpit? Yeah, okay. Thanks. Hello. Um, I came here to visit uh, New Life Fellowship almost seven years ago, and uh, this was, became my home. I felt right at home. The thing that impressed me the most about this church was that this church prays. Everyone here prays, and I believe in the power of prayer. And I know God is listening to us when we pray. He loves to hear us talk to Him. And what a blessing this church has been to me. But as soon as I joined, bam, I had a heart attack. And then the stint they put in my heart, the medication caused me to have this rheumatic condition. I couldn't lift my arms. I couldn't walk. And then the medicine that they gave me to um, stop the rheumatic condition caused me to go blind. And I'm... And, and meanwhile, things at home weren't very good. I was having trouble financially. My husband wasn't safe. And then the IRS came after us. And it got really, really hard. And I couldn't understand. And I, I would talk to God and say, why is this happening to me? And, and I started to cry. And I cried and I cried. <sighs> they call it a breakdown. And it took a, a while. And while I was recovering from that, I asked everyone in this church, especially the ladies at the Bible study, please pray for my husband's salvation. And I asked them, please pray for our finances. This is so hard. And all of a sudden, I started to see miracles in my life. My husband walked up to this altar right here about four years ago, and he asked Jesus to be his Lord and Savior. A couple weeks later, he decided to get baptized, and everything at home changed. We started praying, we started reading the Bible, we started going to Bible study, and, you know, it, it seemed like the problems weren't so bad anymore. It wasn't so hard. And more and more, things started to get better. But then I had another heart attack, and then I had a silly accident and blew out my neck and my knee, and I was crippled again, and I thought, no, I know that all things happen for the good. So I know that God's in control here. And then, at that point, my husband got cancer. 
And that was a hard three years between the chemo and the radiation and the surgery and the radiation and the chemo. And he didn't get discouraged and he didn't get angry about his disease. Instead, he said, I'm going to use this for my ministry. And everyone that came to see him with his oxygen in his nose, he would say, do me a big favor. And they would say, oh, okay, sure. And he'd say, read the Gospel of John. And then they'd say, okay. And he'd say, now. And he'd hand them the Bible and say, read it to me out loud. I can't tell you how many people came in our house to say goodbye to Pasquale and wound up spending the afternoon reading the whole Gospel of John to him out loud. And that was his ministry. And he didn't get the scourge, and I think that's why he lasted so long. And then he, he died, and you all prayed for me, and God answered. And all through this whole ordeal, this church has been praying for me, and God answered. Oh, after he died, my heart hurt, and I thought it was, I thought it was just a broken heart, but it turned out another heart attack. And then I just couldn't start feeling better. I was like sick all winter. It turns out I have diabetes. So while I'm trying to get through that, I couldn't breathe. I, I got an asthma attack, and then it turned into pneumonia. And just last month, on Father's Day, um, uh, Howard was doing this service here, and he asked if anybody needed prayer. And I, I came up because I couldn't breathe. And you all stood up, and you laid hands on me, and anointed me with oil. And I could feel the chest open, and the, the tightness ease, and the wheeze went away. And I was healed, and it was a miracle. Amen. And prayer works. God loves it. You know, today my heart is strong. Um, my non-believing husband is dancing in heaven with the angels. He's teaching him how to jitterbug. My vision is back. I'm no longer crippled. My finances are good. My blood sugar is good today. My heart is happy, and I feel grateful because God answers prayers. Now, every week, some of you take your bulletin home, and there's a list of all those people that need prayer. And you pray for these people, not knowing what their problems are. But you need to know that God answers prayers. Because I can look around through here, and I can see all the miracles. I know all these people have been asking for prayers, and God answers our prayers, and there's miracles happening all around us. And, and we, don't give them, we don't stop and give them the credit. We just say, oh, that's, that's, that was nice. I know for sure that our God is faithful. I know for sure that Jesus is alive. And I know for sure that the Holy Spirit is moving through this congregation right now. Amen. And, and I want to thank all of you for praying for me all these years. Please don't stop. <laughs> Let's keep praying for each other. Let's just keep talking to our God. And he loves it when we talk to him. But most importantly, let's recognize all the miracles around us and praise him for his mighty, mighty. Thank you. God's working in so many people's lives. It's a great thing, especially in the climate of our country today. I wonder, has anybody ever heard of that? It was kind of a national program that started a few years back, and they saw those little yellow stickers on people's cars and at their houses called the Safe Place. Anybody heard of that? It was kind of a great program. It kind of went all the way through the country to where if you could sign up and if you went through the process and you were qualified to be somebody that would help somebody if they were having trouble tough talks, then you could be a safe place. And it was mostly designed for teenagers, young people that uh, didn't feel safe at home or maybe they had no home to go to. And, and, and they could... They could depend upon that little sign and say, this is the place where I can go and I can get some help and I can feel secure. And it was just a great idea, but the problem is, is that there was a few people that kind of took advantage of that. And maybe some of the young people weren't as safe as they thought they were going to be. And I thought to myself as we were looking through the news the last couple of weeks, and the uh, printed media and the social media and all of that kind of stuff, I realized that, you know, <laughs> it's kind of hard to find a safe place. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to ask you today, 
If I told you about a little place over here that was a real safe place, that when you felt danger pressing in on you, maybe you felt uh, uh, real problems coming up in your life, maybe you just didn't even have enough money to buy food, there was a safe place that I could tell you to go and it wouldn't cost you nothing. And if I were to tell you I had a whole string of keys right up here and I would give you one if you wanted it, would you want to come up and get it? Well, the thing about it is, is right here I have a key to the safest place in the entire universe. That's right here. The key is right here and there is no safety that you could ever have that could be anything like this. Right. Amen. You know, the key is here. I want to read you out of Psalms, chapter 46. You can look it up. It's in there. It's just, just one of those little things on the key. Psalm 46, and I want you to pay attention. It's beginning with verse 1. I'm going to read the whole psalm for you. It says, listen at this close. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fail. God will help her at day, break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts His voice and the earth just melts. <clears throat> the Lord Almighty is with us and the God of Jacob is our fortress. He says, this is such a great verse, He says, be still and know that I am God. Amen. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. Would you join me as we pray about that? Father God in heaven, thank you so much that you are our fortress. Father, thank you so much that you have shown your love to us. Father, thank you so much that you have provided us a safe place, and that safe place can be called the kingdom of God. Father, we are here today, Father, just to, just to allow your word, your spirit, your key to remind us that we have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And Father, when we live in there, we don't have to fear anything. Father, that all we have to do is just sit still and know that you are God. So thank you, Father. We praise you. We worship you. And Father, I pray that you would use your words right out of your scripture this morning to teach us a little bit more about what we should know about living in your safe place. So we offer you this time, thanking you for it, in the name of Jesus, our Christ, and our Messiah, and our Savior. Amen. 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 You know, <laughs> I can't help but use my imagination sometimes. I, I can just imagine being there when this psalm was actually written. This is a psalm of hope. I mean hope. When situations seemed to be pretty hopeless, this was a psalm of hope. And they needed it. And I think right now when we look around to us, it's a psalm of hope. And we need that hope right now. We need that confidence of knowing. Because, <laughs> you see, in the midst of trouble, they can sing praises and write songs. And in the midst of problems, we can sing praises. We can worship our God. We can know that we can be living in the kingdom of heaven, though all else might be failing around us. We can be right there and we can enjoy it. I understand that this song was the inspiration for uh, Martin Luther when he wrote that great, great song, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. I wish I could sing. i just sing it for you right the mighty fortress is our God. Wow, what an amazing thing. <laughs> you see, oh, another thing I just wanted to bring forward. You know, 
sometimes when things bad happen, it brings forth some of the keys. And I noticed last, the last few days after that tragedy in Dallas, Texas, and what a tremendous tragedy it was. But I kept noticing that every time the social media would come on, somebody would post another verse. And a lot of them came right out of this psalm, and they would post a verse and say, hey, you can be distraught, you can be worried, you can be afraid, you can be anything, but there is an answer, there is a safe place that you can go. It's called the kingdom of God. Amen. Wow. You know what, I, I would just encourage you, I, I want to challenge you, when you leave here today, there's a couple of psalms that I want you to go back and read. One of them is Psalm 46, and the other one is Psalm 84. And, and just go back and reread them. And then when you look at something in the newspaper or you hear something on the radio or any place else or the Facebook or whatever it is, and you hear see something bad, just remember this. Just be still. No. I'm God. I'll be your fortress. I'll be your caretaker. I'll be the one that takes care of you. Amen. Wow. Amen. Be still. And know that I am God. Now I want to take it a little bit farther. The other verse, the psalm that I read, I want you to go to, to Psalms chapter 84. This isn't just a psalm. This was a song that was meant to be sung. Did I mess this up? Probably fell off, didn't I? Let me get to my safe place here. Okay, Psalm 84. Think about this. This is a song. Remember the song? How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. You hear that song? This, is, this was meant to be sung, and it was meant to be an encouragement at the worst times in somebody's life. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to finish here in just a little bit. Think about the courts of the Lord. What is that? You know what? We can live in... The heaven, kingdom of heaven, right here and right now. We don't have to wait until we're gone, until we've passed away from this earth. We can live in the kingdom of God right here and right now. And when we put our faith in God through faith in Jesus Christ, we can live in the kingdom of God. And He is our fortress. He's our mighty God. We can dwell in Him because He wants to dwell inside of us. Talk about the best safe place in Amen. the world. I'm going to keep going there. My soul yearns even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Notice that living God. Mm. Even the sparrow has found a home. And the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have your young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They're ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage as they pass through this valley of Baca. They make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. <laughs> wow. I'm going to stop right there for just a second. You know, Living in the kingdom of God. Remember what Jesus said to Nicodemus, you know, back there in the third chapter of John. You know, Nicodemus came and, and, and in some ways he really wanted to find out about Jesus, but in other ways he just kind of wanted to argue and, and he wanted to get this thing going. And instead of arguing anything like that, you know, Nicodemus, he, sees, he said, he said, Rabbi, we, we know you're a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you're doing if God were not with them. And Jesus wasn't going to be deterred. He didn't argue. He didn't do nothing. He just said, no one, no one can see the kingdom of heaven unless he's born again. How can this be, Nicodemus asked. Surely he can't go a second time into his mother's womb to be born. And Jesus, he wasn't going to argue. He just said, no one can enter the kingdom of heaven unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Amen. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You want to live in that safe place called the kingdom of God, you have to get there through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's right. That's the only key. Amen. That's it. Amen. And that's why we come together and we worship together and we read this Bible and we study and we encourage one another. And you know what? 
That encouragement makes a difference. Just like Miss Joan was saying. Just like she was you know, we pray for one another. I can't imagine a day that goes by that I wouldn't want to pray. And so many times I'm praying for so many people. And as I look out here through the congregation, I just it reminds me, I, you know what, that's a person that, that's, that's hurting over something. I want to pray for them specifically this morning. Whatever it is, we have that because I love living in the kingdom of heaven. And it's right now, right here, right now. That's right. Wow. <laughs> in verse 10, think about, remember this song? Verse 10 there, Psalm 84. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor, and no good thing does He withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Amen. Or maybe I could say blessed is the one who trusts in you. You see, God is the one that provides everything. He's the one who created the whole world. You think there's something He can't do for you? No. He's the creator. Of the, he's the one that keeps it all intact. We're trying to mess it up. But God can keep it all together. I read a story recently. I wanted to kind of share it with you. That There was a, a famous pastor by the name of D.L. Moody. Most of you have probably heard him. He said a man came to see him one day and he, uh, he said he was really worried because he didn't really feel saved. Dr. Moody asked him, he said, was Noah safe in the ark. Man, revival, certainly he was. Well, Dr. Moody said, <clears throat> what made him safe? His feelings or the ark? Of course, the inquirer got the point. How foolish I've been, he said. It's not my feelings. It's Christ Amen. who saved me. That's right. Amen. What a tremendous thing because you see, Noah was safe in the ark, but you've got to realize that around him, surrounding him, the floodwaters were everywhere. Everything was being changed. The entire earth was covered with water and it was coming up and there was death and there was destruction and there was turmoil and everything else. And in the ark, Noah was safe. And that's what we have today when we live in the kingdom of God. No matter what's happening around us, we are safe in the hands of the ones who created the entire universe to begin with. Wow. <laughs> you see, throughout the scriptures right here, we see that we have the keys to a safe place. Do you live there? Do you know where to go if you kind of stepped outside and you need to get back in and get to the safe place? It's right here. It's in the book. <laughs> Psalm 119, 14, I'm sure most of you know it. It says, you are my refuge and my shield, and I have put my hope in you. And I don't need to put my hope in nothing else because I've put my hope in you, and you are going to take care of me. Not because I'm good enough to deserve it, because I'm not, but you are going to take care of me because I have put my hope in you. That's the God that we're talking about. The Creator God. <laughs> wow. So many other things that I wanted to be able to share. And it, it seems like we, we run out of time. So, but I'm going to share this next one anyway. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 30. And this is a sayings by a guy named Old Arger. And you don't know who he is. But you know what? There's a lot of things in the Bible. We don't know who it is. We don't know a whole lot about who wrote it. But one thing about it, we do know one thing. It comes from God, and it is part of the keys to the kingdom of God. So if it's in there, we need to pay attention. So what he says, this men's utterance, he entered it to Ithiel. He said, I'm weary, God. I'm weary, God, but I can prevail. Surely I am only a brute, not a man. I do not have human great understandings. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I attained to the knowledge of the Holy One who has gone up to heaven and come down, 
whose hands have gathered up the wind, who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak, who has established all the ends of the earth. What is His name? And what is the name of His Son? This is right out of the Old Testament. Don't you love that? <laughs> Surely you know God. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in Him. Do not add to His words, or He will rebuke you and prove you a liar. He says, two things I ask of you, Lord. Don't refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood from my lies from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Give me only my daily bread. Otherwise I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so distraught, dishonor the name of my God. <laughs> Get back, Satan! <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't like it. Wow. There is a time when every one of us needs a safe place. Joan talked about it. There is a time in our lives where we have to stop and say, you know what? Everything's out of control, and I'm not in control. Now, there may be a time in your life that you said that, and you said, I've got to come to God, and you have come to God. And He's given you the key to the safe place. And He's told you, come unto me, all you who are wearied and burdened and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. For my burdens are easy. My yoke is light. But he says, learn of me. And that's what we're trying to do today. Learn about the fact that no matter what happens, if you're Noah in the ark, the whole thing can be going to pieces. But you are safe in the ark, in the kingdom of heaven. And you have the key. That's right. You have the key. And God is the one that has done all the work. You know, Romans is such a great book. And probably most of you know that little thing that they have to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's called the Roman road to salvation. It's not the only way, but it's a great way. Because, see, we have to first realize that we are out of control. And what says Romans chapter? It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's right. That means everyone. Anybody in here perfect? I sure put my, down, my arm down in a hurry. But I can tell you one thing. We don't have to be perfect. That's right. Amen. We don't have to be perfect. What we have to do is be dependent upon God Himself. And I'm totally dependent. Because I could never live up to what God has for me. I could never do good enough to be deserving of what God has already given me. He's chosen... Not to give me a lot of riches. But He's chosen to give me peace Amen. that I couldn't buy with all of the riches in the world. Mm -hmm. He's chosen to give me the key to the kingdom of heaven, the safe place here on this earth, which I couldn't buy no matter what I offered. That's right. All of the silver and the gold in the world couldn't get someone to the first step of heaven. That's right. Amen. And yet it's free. Because see, right after that in Romans, it said, not only all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, it said, <laughs> the wages of sin is death. That's right. I mean, that's a scary verse, and I'm glad some of the little children were in here because they don't understand, but the verse, the Bible says, and right here in the key, right here in the key, it said, the wages of sin is death. And that's such a scary for. But all of a sudden, then it goes to the second part of that. Verse, and I love it. So, but the gift of God is right. eternal life through Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. Amen. Wow. First, he tells us about our punishment that we so richly deserve, every one of us. And then he says, but the gift. And it's a gift. <laughs> you don't have to pay for it. Amen. It's right here. The gift of God is eternal life. You know, and just on and on and on throughout the scriptures. You know what he said? And it's so easy. He's done all the work. 
Jesus Christ came into this world and He was born of a virgin and that's the truth. And He lived a perfect life and that is the truth. And then He allowed them to take His life and that is the truth. And they hung upon that cruel cross. He chose to do that. They didn't force it on Him. Remember what it said in the Scripture? He could have called 10,000 leagues of angels and they'd have destroyed everybody around Him if He did not want it. But He wanted to do it because He wanted to know you Personally, Amen. every one of us. God. He wanted to know us. He wanted to know everything about us. And He wanted to say, I am knocking at your door and I want to come in and I want to visit with you and I want to have dinner with you. Hallelujah. And I want you to barbecue me a steak. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I can't help but believe. I love to those things. I think, that's God. He wants to come into my heart. I don't deserve it. But oh, I can be good enough. And he's, you don't even have to clean it up. You don't have to dust the cabinets or nothing. I want to come into your house and I want to live with you. And I want to be your Savior. Amen. And I want to be your safe place. Mm -hmm. And I say thank you. How sweet thank it you. is. Thank you, God. That's right. What a glorious, glorious day it is. It's just like Miss Connie said. What a glorious day it is. If you know God as your personal Savior, every single day is a glorious day. Not all days are absolutely perfect. What did we sing that song a while ago? What did it say? I will not be moved. That's what I was thinking when I woke up this morning in bed. <laughs> but he moved me. He moved me and he woke me up in my glory and I looked outside and oh, what a glorious sunrise. Amen. And you know what? I have to look through some little branches of a tree with green leaves and little hummingbirds flying through the air. And I think, oh, this is so wonderful. And you know what? It doesn't even drive me completely crazy when my neighbor's dog is barking at me. It's a wonderful world. And when we live in that safe place called the kingdom of God, there is nothing to be afraid of. My prayer is that every person in this room today lives in the kingdom of God. Do you live there? And if you've ever lived there, have you just kind of walked away and started doing things on your own and all of a sudden you're looking around at all of the turmoil and it's scary? Mm -hmm. And you look around at all of the negative things that are happening in the world and it's kind of scary? And you know what? When you're not just enmeshed in the kingdom of God, those things are scary. But they don't have to be. Be still. Yes. And know that I am God. That's right. And God says, I want to be your safe place. Amen. Do you live in that safe place? Would you be willing to draw closer to God to enjoy that safe place? It's not a feeling, remember? <laughs> Noah probably didn't feel real safe and secure when he's looking at seeing all that rain and the water going up. But he was safe. That's what it is. It's not about a feeling. It's about a relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask our praise team, they're going to come forward today. We're going to sing